are here for week number two of Dana White's Contender Series. And if you were here for week number one, you know that we had some ups, we had some downs, but we definitely cashed on the biggest underdog of the card in Kevin Boros. That was us. We nailed it. Good job, guys. You were all there for it. We made some money. We made it work. But also, there was a couple of fights we didn't get so such a good prediction on. No big deal. We hit a lot of good ones. We did a great job. We ended up on top. No big deal. Now, in week number two, feel good about most of the picks. This one's a tough one, and let me tell you why. We have a matchup at strawweight between a couple of ladies, one of, both of which are undefeated, one of which you can find all of her fights, all five of those, for Janaina Silva, I think is how you say that, but Eduardo Mura. Eduardo Mura, I have found one of her fights. One, just one, with the help of my buddy Artem and MMA Analysis. He sent me it on Twitter, shot it over to me. Uh, the fight that he found on Reddit, which I don't go on Reddit, that place is a, uh, <laughs> is a very wild place. I don't like to go on there. I like to stick with the... Uh, the other places to find fights. So it was awesome. It was very nice of him to find that fight. Either way, that was the only fight I found. Uh, there's nothing out there. If you know of some other fights, if you have video of Eduardo Mora fighting, please send it to me. I can revamp this video. We can go back to it and redo it. But for now, we're going to break it down with what we've got. From what I can tell, the height and reach is going to be the biggest uh, biggest thing that stands out right away, where Silva is 5'1 with a 64-inch reach. She's taking on a lady in Mora who is 5'6 with a 67-inch reach. So she's going to be much taller, much rangier. And that's not going to be something that's a kind of a surprise for Silva. She's not used to being taller than her opponents. She's only 5'1. There's not a whole lot of people under 5'1 anyway, especially in MMA. But either way, she's going to come forward with her pressure. She's going to start throwing that right hand. She's got pretty good striking. And when I say pretty good, I mean she's got a good right hand and she's got some power to it. She's going to come forward, throw that big right hand, reset. But if she gets her opponent backing up, she's going to come forward with a couple of those, string them together. Boom, boom, throwing those right hands. She's really, you know, going after it. She'll mix in the other shots as well. But the right hand is her favorite weapon and she uses it very well when she lands it. You know, usually she can get a knockdown or land some serious damage. Uh, she is reluctant to go to the ground, though, which is really weird because even when she's in top position, she ha she, she'll she sometimes get over the opponent and then just kind of back up and just say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Now, I could see that if you were going against somebody who's a really solid grappler, but sometimes she's going against these opponents that are like, you know, not super high level and she's just afraid to get to the mat with them or she just wants to strike. One of those two things is true. It's really hard to know. So either way, that does give me a bit of a red flag, but it's not necessarily the biggest she does have the striking advantage in this matchup from what I can tell because she's going to get up against Mora, who is pretty much exclusively a grappler from what I understand. Um, it makes sense from if you look at a record and things like that. Um, she does have good grappling from the, first, the only fight I saw. She wasted zero time going for that takedown. Once she got it, she se secured the control, got the position she wanted, and then started looking for the finish, and she obviously got it. She does a very good job at doing that based on the record and what you can kind of tell there as well as that one fight that I was able to watch. For me... This fight is a hard one to predict, so I don't necessarily recommend putting your money on it. But the reason I'm going to pick Mora, it's who I'm going to pick, is because I typically favor the person that is going to control where the fight takes place. And I do think Mora is going to be able to decide whether this stays in the striking or goes to the mat. And I think she's going to take it to the mat. I think Mora is going to get the win. But like I said, lowest confidence pick because there's just not a ton of tape on Mora. Let me know, guys, if you have that video some, or a, a video outside of the... One that I watched, which you wouldn't know which one that is. And off the top of my head, I can't remember her opponent's name. Uh, but either way, if you have more than one of these, send it my way. I would appreciate it very much. I'll see you guys on the next fight.